Well, good morning. We're so glad you're going to worship with us this morning. This is an oldie but a goodie. It's called Mighty Warrior. from the dead into your freedom our chains are gone no weapon that's formed shall prevail your word is stronger we're overcome our God Good morning. Welcome to Triad Church Online. I'm Heath. I'm one of the pastors. So glad you're joining us again this week. We look forward to worship with you soon, live and in person. 
But until then, you keep liking, keep following along as we keep singing about God's promises this morning. to fall on the name of Jesus I will call for I know my God is in control and his purpose is unshakable it doesn't matter what I feel it doesn't matter what I see my hope will always be in your promises to me. Now I'm casting out all fear, for your love has set me free. My hope will always be in your promises to me. the days to come I will not forget what you have done for you have supplied my every need and your presence is enough for me yeah. it doesn't matter what I feel it doesn't matter what I see my hope will always be in your promises to me. Now I'm casting out all fear, for your love has set me free. My hope will always be in your promises to me. more than enough for me you will always be more than enough for me nothing's gonna stop the plans you made nothing's gonna take your love away you will always be more than enough for me you will always be more than enough for me you will always be more than enough for me. Nothing's gonna stop the plans you made. Nothing's gonna take your love away. You will always be more than enough for me. Come on, shout it. You will always be more than enough for me. You will always be more than enough for me. Nothing's gonna stop the plans you made Nothing's gonna take your love away You will always be more than enough for me It doesn't matter what I feel It doesn't matter what I see My hope will always be Your promises to me Now I'm casting out all fear for your love has set me free My hope will always be In your promises to me It doesn't matter what I feel It doesn't matter what I see My hope will always be In your promises to me And now I'm casting out all fear For your love has set me free My hope will always be your promises to me Your promises to me Your promises to me Your promises to me It 
doesn't matter what I feel It doesn't matter what I see My hope will always be Your promises to me Hallelujah Psalm chapter 40 Starting in verse 1 I waited patiently for the Lord to help me And he turned to me and heard my cry he lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. O oh Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Hallelujah. Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. All who search for you will be filled with joy and gladness in you. And those who love your salvation, may they shout, the Lord is great. The Lord is great. The Lord is great. The Lord is great. You are my helper and my savior, oh my God. our walls down Spirit break out And heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls down sound of heaven touching earth, the sound of heaven touching earth, my Father, and all of heaven roars your name, sing louder, let this place erupt with praise, can you hear it, the sound of heaven touching earth. Shaking up the earth 
Heaven skies revival. We want to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here. Spirit break out. Break our walls down. King Jesus, you're the name we're lifting high, your glory is shaking up the earth and skies, revival, we want to see your kingdom, yeah, we want to see your kingdom here, King Jesus. You're the name we're lifting high. Your glory is shaking up the earth and skies. Revival, we want to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here. Spirit break out. Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls down understand all of your greatness and glory and majesty. We thank you that you invite us into even just a glimpse, and that is what we want. Just one more glimpse of your face. We worship and honor you because of who you are, because of all the promises in your word that tell us who you are. We rest and what we know to be true in our lives. Thank you that you are here. Thank you that you never stop to make a way, never stop making a way for us to be drawn deeper into intimacy and fellowship with you. You are invited to come and do whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit.
worship you I worship you You are here You're working in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Moving in our midst I worship you I worship you You are here You're working in this place I worship you I worship you Cause you are the way maker Miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God That is who you are Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. 
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never will, you never you stop never will. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Thank you, Lord, that you make a way where there is no way. That all your promises are yes and amen. That you don't, uh, you don't say no to your promises. Sometimes we don't understand them. Oh, Lord, you're a miracle worker. Lord, we need them sometimes. Lord, you are our Lord, and we exalt you. We ask you, Lord, to come now and fill this place and by this place I mean all the homes watching as well as this room and I pray that by your spirit you would move in people's hearts today for unless you move it's really pointless what I have to say oh Lord if you'll open our eyes to see your word to hear your voice through your word then we can be changed and that's what we ask for in the name of Jesus amen Good morning. Good Sunday morning to you. So good to be with you again. Uh, As hopefully you already know, but if you don't, uh, beginning next week we will have some live services here. Uh, We will continue to video uh, and post on on Sunday morning for those of you who don't feel yet like getting out uh, for a meeting. Please, if you're not comfortable getting out yet, stay there. Worship with us as you have been. Uh, For those who feel like getting out and and, uh, feel safe to come and and mingle. Uh, We will do some things to keep the social distancing guidelines and all of that. Uh, So you'll be welcome to come. We have three services next week, uh, Saturday at 5 p.m. and then Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Uh, if you're not really tied to that 11 a.m., uh, we expect that's going to be the busiest one. So if, if you don't care which one you come to, maybe you could select one of the others to help us keep the, the crowd dispersed as much as possible. We would be grateful uh, for that. We, uh, we're in a series called Forsaken, question mark. Are we forsaken? Are we ever forsaken? And we know the scripture tells us in Hebrews that he'll never leave us or forsake us. So the answer is no, we're not forsaken. But we're looking at people in the scripture who have been in situations where it would be normal for them to think they were forsaken. In some cases, maybe they did feel forsaken. In other cases, maybe they didn't. But we want to look at their situation because we can draw some lessons for us. So our lesson today is on John the Baptist. Uh, So I ask you, do you know what John the Baptist and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Uh, Their middle name. And uh, uh, that's as good as I have on John the Baptist. Uh, (laughs) But we're going to talk today about him. So let's read in Luke chapter 7. If you've got your Bible there, open it up, and uh, we'll have it on the screen, I think, for you too. Beginning in verse 17 of Luke 7, uh, it says, And this report about him, that's about Jesus, talking about Jesus, how he's performing all these miracles, and uh, some of John's disciples Uh, have been there to see that and the report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things 
And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus saying, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Now let's, let's think about why he would say that, okay? He's in jail. And he's in jail uh, unjustly. He's in jail for calling out the king for marrying his brother's wife, taking his brother's wife as a wife. I'm not sure if he even got married, but anyway, he divorced his wife, took, took his brother's wife, and uh, uh, John the Baptist said, hey, that ain't cool. That's not right. Don't do that. You shouldn't do that. And in those days, you didn't get to just say what you want to. We grew up in a country where you can say a lot of things, and uh, they couldn't, and so he got put in jail. And so I can imagine he's in this jail, and he's thinking, you know, I baptized Jesus. I was there. In fact, if you'll remember the story, when Mary came to visit Elizabeth, when both of them were pregnant, okay, so that's uh, Jesus' mom and, and John's mom, when uh, Mary came into the presence of Elizabeth, uh, inside her womb, John the Baptist jumped, and, Mary, and Elizabeth prophesied about the Lord, that this was the Messiah. And so, John grew up here in this story, and he's somewhere around 30 years old because he's just slightly older than Jesus. When he, so he hits the, uh, hits the market. There. I don't know where he found people, but he found some people, and he started preaching. Now, get this picture. He comes dressed in camel's skin with a leather belt around his waist, okay? He's a, he's a fashionista. So he shows up looking pretty rough, and it says he's eating locusts and honey. Now, locusts are bugs, in case you don't know. And if you're going to eat bugs, I reckon you ought to put honey on them to, to do the best you can with them. So he shows up eating strange stuff, looking strange. Some have said that maybe he was one of the Essenes. Uh, there's no definite proof of that. But this much we know, he came looking pretty rough, and he's told all the people, said, repent from your sins and be baptized because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they knew what that meant. That means the Messiah is about to come. That's what he's saying. The Messiah is about to come and establish his kingdom, and you guys need to repent because you're out of line. And the whole, not the whole nation, not every person, but people from all over flocked to him to hear this message, and he wasn't preaching it easy. He was no pushover. He was no, there was no easy believism in what he was saying. He told the religious leaders, he said, you brood of vipers. You come out here acting like you want to repent. Let me tell you, you go do the act of repentance. Then come on back here. He's saying, don't just give lip service to this repentance thing, but be serious about it. Now, that's what John's doing. And he's, he's in jail now, and he's maybe, the impression you get from the scripture is, he may be feeling forsaken. I baptized Jesus. I said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the earth. And some of my disciples went and followed him, and I was fine with that. I prepared the way for him to come. Maybe he ought to know I'm in here. Maybe he's forgot me. Maybe that's all it is. So you guys go and ask him, should we be looking for another one? Or are you really the one? Or maybe he's thinking, well, maybe he wasn't really the Messiah. Maybe he's just another prophet like me and we're both preparing the way. I don't know what he's thinking. All I know is he's sitting in jail and that doesn't fit his picture of how things were going to go down. I suspect he thought when Jesus gets in his ministry full bore, I'm going to be right there with him doing whatever. If I got to, I'll put the chairs out and pass the plate. Whatever it is, I'll do whatever he needs in this. And he's seeing, he's disillusioned just a little bit. He sends his guys. Say, go ask him, are you really the one? Or should we be looking for somebody else? So this is what happened. Verse 20. When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you saying, are you the coming one or do we look for another? And that very hour, he, Jesus, cured many of infirmities, afflictions, evil spirits, and many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, go tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he who's not offended because of me. Whoo, there's a bunch of stuff in that right there. What he said is, okay, guys, this is all I want you to do. I want you to go, go tell John what's going on here. And he'll, he'll make a decision. He'll make the right decision. And uh, you tell him that, you know, there are people that are blind that are seeing now. 
we don't see as many miracles maybe as we ought to see uh, it, like that. But you know what? There's plenty of people that have been spiritually blind that had their eyes opened. And we ought to be seeing that that's the work of Jesus in that. The lame are walking. Those who didn't know how to walk, they're walking the right way now. The dead are raised up because they've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. The poor hear the gospel. And he told him, he said, go tell John, it's really a blessing for you if you're not offended because of me. Now, that brings up a point I think we should talk about for just a second. Because so often I meet people who are offended by Jesus. They're offended by Jesus in as much as they don't think Jesus is doing what he ought to do. He's not obeying them. They've told him what he needs to do and he hasn't done it. You know, that's kind of the point of this whole series is God's doing stuff we don't understand. He's doing things bigger than us. For Abraham, there was a reason he made him wait till he was 100 years old to have a son or to have the son of promise. There's a reason that he let Job go through all the hardship he went through and then turned around and blessed him greatly. There's a reason he let David wait 20 years or so to become the king after he'd anointed him as the coming king and after he'd proved himself able to lead. There's a reason why John the Baptist is in prison because he'd accomplished what he came for. The, uh, Jesus uh, said he's as a voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And he came and he did that and the way of the Lord's prepared. Now it's time for John the Baptist to move out of the way. He ultimately gets beheaded. He doesn't get out of jail. Jesus didn't, go tell, didn't say, go tell John, I'll be there in a little bit. Hang in there, bud. I'll get you out. He didn't send bail money. He let him stay right there where he was because that's what he's called to do. Sometimes our calling ain't pretty. Sometimes what we're called to is hard. But let me tell you, you're not forsaken. John was not forsaken. And when John got the word, he was fine with that because he knew that Jesus was accomplishing what he came for. Verse 24. When the messengers of John had departed, he began to speak to the multitudes concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? Hmm. But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who are gorgeously apparelled and live in luxury are in king's courts. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. For I say to you, among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he who's least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And when all the people heard him, even the tax collectors justified God, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers, they rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. Interesting, he paints a little picture there, John the Baptist. So what did you come out in the wilderness to see? When you came out here to listen to John, what were you looking for? Were you looking for a reed blown about by the wind? He was no easy guy. He came tough. He came ready. He came locked and loaded for Herod. Got him imprisoned, but it also reached a nation and turned their hearts to repentance in a way to prepare them for what Jesus was coming to bring to them. He said, what'd you come out? You come out to see some guy dressed up all pretty and showing off? Hmm. No, as I already mentioned, he was in camel's hair with a leather belt, eating bugs and honey. You didn't come out to see those things. You came out because a prophet was out here and he had the word of God coming out of his mouth and the spirit of God anointing him to do it and you came to hear it. And I'm telling you, he's a great prophet. He said, in fact, he's not just a great prophet, he's the greatest prophet that's ever been that's what Jesus called him okay I might have put Elijah up higher than him if I was ranking him okay. I'm not ranking him Jesus did he said he's the greatest and then he makes this astounding statement for us he said but although he's the greatest prophet that's ever come the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him that means 
what we have is better than what he had. Do you understand that? He didn't have residing in him the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to him, was with him, anointed him, all that stuff. When he died, he didn't get to go immediately to heaven. He didn't have his sins completely paid for yet. They were just atoned for by this lamb that was sacrificed once a year. And was he repented and, and the, the curse of those sins didn't stay on him. But he didn't have the same forgiveness you and I can have in Jesus. What Jesus came to do was to provide a whole lot better than what anybody before that. We have what John the Baptist and the other prophets longed to see. What they prophesied about and wanted to see. What's that about? Man, I'd have liked to, no, I don't know if I'd have liked to have been in Hades when Jesus showed up there. Because I'd have had to be there before he got there. So I don't want to do that. But when he got there to the dead saints and began to tell them, I have paid for your sins. And if you'd like to, you can come up out of this imprisoned status in Hades, paradise, held in the captivity of Satan, although not in punishment. Held in this captivity, I'll take you up out of here and I'll let you go into the very presence of God if you'd like to hear that. That's what we get told when we get born again. You're no longer destined for hell. You're destined for heaven. It's greater what we have. It's what he desired to have. And he didn't have to spend too long down there. I hope they have home movies of that because I'd like to see it when I get to heaven. Four lessons I think we can learn out of this, out of this uh, little character sketch of John the Baptist. First, we need to recognize what God is doing all around us. He's at work. He might say to you, go tell Bill what you see in here. Go tell him that I see somebody sitting on this front row when we get to meet together who used to be addicted to drugs and is now walking with the Lord. Or I see someone who's gone through all the hardship of poverty or of divorce or sickness or whatever it is and God's raised them up. I hope Roger Puckett's watching this. We've been watching him. He was in the hospital for eight weeks. They told him two or three times he won't make it through the night. And we began praying. He and I agreeing on it. Praying that he'd get to go home and he got to go home. Then I started praying that he'd be raised up to where he could stand. Because they said he wouldn't be able to. Before too long he was able to stand. Then I began praying that he'd be able to walk a few steps. Before long, he was taking three steps. He had a therapist helping him, but he was walking on his own power. I was over there the other night. He's taking five or six steps at a time, two or three times a day. He's getting better. We're seeing, go tell whoever what, God, what Jesus is doing in people's lives because he's still real, he's still active, and he's still doing stuff. Now, is he doing that here? Yes. Not as much as I'd like to see. I'd like for us to pay attention to what he is doing. Amen. Let's give him some credit for what he's doing. Let's yeah. notice it. Let's see what God's doing. Look and see what he's doing. Go tell you. Go tell me what you see in here. Second lesson, don't be offended with Jesus. Don't think that God has to act in accordance with your will. He doesn't have to make you get recognized for whatever you do feel cheated by Jesus because people don't realize just how good you are get over yourself he doesn't have to let you see that because that might not be what's best for you, you can bet his idea for you is best but it may not be your idea in fact as much as the heavens are high, high above the earth even so his ways are above our ways and his thoughts above our thoughts so the scripture says did you think he was going to do it different if you ask for something and you didn't get it, maybe you shouldn't get it. Trust him. Don't be offended with Jesus. Third lesson. You have in you a power greater than John had. I just talked about that. I think about when I, when I hear that, I think that uh, on our cell phone that we carry around with us is more, more computing power than the computers they use to send men to the moon. In fact, I, I was watching one of the one of the shows, Apollo 13, maybe a little while back, and 
when everything kind of went wrong, all these engineers started grabbing for a slide rule. If you're not at least 45 years old, you don't even know what a slide rule is. And even if you're that old, you probably don't know how to use one. That's how they were figuring things out, this little device. It's pretty freaky. That, that with the power you walk around with in your hand, they could send somebody to the moon because those were some smart dudes. But anyway, we have a power in us residing in us the Holy Spirit who lives in you is more powerful than you know more powerful than what John the Baptist walked around with and he shook the whole place up and so should we and the fourth lesson the last one I want to hit on is you can only learn and receive these lessons if you've repented remember where it said there that all the tax collectors and the others who had been baptized by John who had repented and been baptized they were excited when Jesus told all that good stuff about John they believed that they were encouraged by that they knew that then that Jesus the Messiah in front of them was saying repentance is what I wanted out of you and those that hadn't repented they didn't like that too much let me tell you if you want to get anywhere with God you better just repent think you don't need to repent you need to repent for that first and then you need to repent because we all need to do that. What's repentance mean? Repentance means you're headed one way and you turn around and go the other way. It's an about face. It's a military term. Quit going that way and go the other way. Do like John told those uh, uh, Pharisees and Sadducees that came out to him. He said, you brood of vipers. Who told you to come out here? Why don't you go do the acts of repentance and then come get baptized? And they stuck their nose in the air and they huffed off from there and they're the ones standing here not approving of what Jesus is saying about him. If we're to receive what he has for us, we have to repent. I would hope that this coronavirus would bring us to repentance. What I've seen so far is it mostly brings us to arguments. Quit it. Repent. Even if you're right repent because you can be right headed and wrong hearted we all need to repent and if we want to receive what he has for us repentance is needed so there you are in your room you're, you're, in, your, you're in your living room or wherever you're watching this right now and I want to ask you have you repented have you repented of the things that you've thought the things that you've said the band's going to come now and we're going to sing in just a minute have you repented if not this is a really good time to do it don't worry about your wife or husband looking at you. They need to do it too. But let's repent and let's ask God to sh let us see, to show us what he's doing around us. That we might have it reported to us by the Holy Spirit what Jesus is doing. And that we might give him glory for that. We can do that, y'all. That's not asking too much. We all need to do it. We can change our very culture if we will take on the culture of repentance. Quit trying to conquer in your own power. And let's conquer with repentance and humility. We can do that. And that's what I call you to do. If you don't know Jesus, first you need to repent of your sins and ask him to become your Lord. You can do that right there. And if you do, I wish you'd send us a message there on the, on the computer or send us a message at the church or call us or call me. Get a hold of us and just share that Jesus has, has come into your heart and you want to follow him all the days of your life. If you don't understand it, call him. We'll explain it to you. But many of you, you know Jesus. You've accepted him. But you've forgotten what he's doing. You've taken your eyes off the ball. And I'm saying let's repent of that and let's turn back and let's follow him. Let's worship for a few minutes and you do whatever God leads you to do there where you are.
the image of love upon death's frame. If having my heart was worth the pain, what joy could you see beyond the grave? If love found my soul worth dying for, how wonderful, how glorious, my Savior scars, victorious, my chains are gone, my debt is paid. From death to life and grace to grace. Oh. If head now owns that vacant. How great is the hope that lives in you The passion that tore through hell like a rose The promise that rolled back death and its stone If freedom is worth the life you raise Where is my sin? Where is my shame? My Jesus If love paid it all to have my heart How wonderful How glorious Scars victorious, my chains are gone, my debt is paid from death to life and grace to When I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I'll see Jesus. And from death to life, I will sing your praise and the wonder of your grace. When I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I'll see Jesus. And from death to life, I will sing your praise. In the wonder of your grace When I see that cross I see freedom When I see that grave I'll see Jesus And from death to life I will see your grace In the wonder of your grace When I see that cross I see freedom When I see that grave I'll see Jesus And from death to life Sing your praise in the wonder of your grace. How my soul will sing your praise in the wonder of your grace. How my soul will sing your praise. How wonderful, how glorious, my Savior. Skies, victorious, my chains are gone, my debt is paid from death to life and grace to grace. When I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that. See Jesus, and from death to life, I will sing your praise in the wonder of your grace. When I 
see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I'll see Jesus. And from death to life, I will sing your praise. In the wonder of your grace, how my soul will sing your praise. In the wonder of your grace, how my soul will sing your praise. Savior skies, victorious, my chains are gone, my debt is paid, from death to life, and grace to grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you paid the price that we couldn't pay, that we might have the life that was hopeless for us without you. Thank you, Lord, that you drew us there. I pray for each person in their home right now who prayed for, for repentance, prayed a prayer of repentance. I pray, oh Lord, you'd meet them there and draw them to the path you want them to walk. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Live the word and change the world. Thank you.